So how did an NFT project called Mad Lads launch in the middle of a bear market on Solana after only opening their Twitter two months ago managed to sell out and make over $1.5 million? That's exactly what we're going to be investigating and looking into in today's video. Now, what really inspired this video today, ladies and gentlemen, was one of our hardest working projects that we've been advising on. The founder comes to me one day and he's like, Leon, I've been implementing every strategy. I've been showing up every day, putting sweat, heart into this project but then out of nowhere comes this project and i still don't understand how they managed this a lot after only opening their discord uh two months ago and it almost sounded like the founder was discouraged seeing that all his hard work but then comes someone and it almost feels like that project got lucky and all of a sudden was able to sell out so what this prompted me to do is go do a deep dive and actually look at the project so i could have a good answer for my client be able to tell them like, here's exactly what they did and here's what we're gonna learn from them. And this is where I realized that the case study of Mad Lads is actually a very interesting one that a lot of us could learn a lot of things from. And I've actually decided to spin that into an actual YouTube video so we can all learn from this experience. As we are right now, we can see that Mad Lads, they are a Solana based project. We haven't had a lot of case studies lately and not a lot of Solana ones. So definitely refreshing to see that. We can see that they currently have a floor price of 73 Solana and they have an, an art style, an art meta that is very popular for Solana, which is the whole mafia genre, which was actually started by this project I made a case study about a couple months ago called Art of Mob. They kind of started the whole uh, mafia meta, which is super popular on Solana. So on Ethereum, for example, the very popular meta is anime. On Solana, it's the Mafia style. And we can see they have a total supply of 10,000 items and the mint price was 6.9 Solana. So $10,000 times 6.9 times the price of Solana at that time, which was $20. If we do the math, we're gonna get about $1.5 million were made during the mint of the project without even looking at the royalties, which is enforced. And they currently have a total volume of almost a million Solana. That's a lot of Solanas um, as secondary volume. So really today we're going to be reverse engineering exactly what is it that happened step by step along the process that allowed Mad Lads to receive that level of success during the bear market. I'm going to be identifying what they did, what you can learn, and also something important, which is what is an opportunity that opened in front of them that allowed them to receive this level of success, which is something that they might not have the direct control over, but they were able to rise to the occasion and actually take advantage of that. And also, ladies and gentlemen, I did want to let you know that along this video, I am going to be dropping an exclusive invite link to an exclusive Discord server that I'm opening specifically for my watchers. The link is going to be for only 10 invites. So the first 10 people that are actually able to paste that link in Discord are going to be able to enter. And I'm not gonna tell you too much about it. The only thing I'm gonna tell you is I, Leon Aboud, wanna inspire and wanna create the next generation of Web3 builders. I wanna onboard the world's largest brands into the Web3 space. And by being part of this community, you're going to be able to grow with me along my side. So along this video, there's gonna be a link show up somewhere on the screen. And all you need to do is just type that link as it's written with the capital letters, with the lowercase letters. And if you make it on time, the first 10 people are going to have access to the private Discord server. So ladies and gentlemen, how were Mad Lads able to make $1.5 million during the bear market after only opening their Twitter two months ago on February 1st? So right here, I am on Mad Lads' Twitter. They have 42.9 thousand followers. And if you scroll to the very bottom of their Twitter, you can see the first ever tweet was made on February 1st. So February 1st, we're freaking mad lads. It received that one tweet, received over 800,000 impressions, 4K likes, 1.7K retweets, and 900 comments. And directly, they launched their Discord server, which is not a strategy that is very popular right now. And definitely, these are not the types of numbers that most NFT projects see right now during the bear market. So. I went deep dive, really reverse engineered what exactly happened at every stage of the way and realized that all people see and the first impression is really the tip of the iceberg. But what we fail to see is 95% of that iceberg, which is sitting under water. And that's exactly where the actual results came. What we don't see is the two years of building that went behind Mad Lads. And people only see the two months of marketing that they've been doing on Twitter. 
It's important for us to know that there are three main stakeholders in this project. And by stakeholders, those are the three main characters, the three main entities that led to this project succeeding. So the first entity is we have the actual founder of Mad Lads, which is Armani. His nickname is Armani. We then have XNFT and then we have Backpack. These are the three main entities that were crucial to the success of Mad Lads. So this lovely gentleman right here, Mad Armani, we can see turns out to be a pretty reputable uh, name in the NFT space with 41,000 followers um, and is the creator of three different brands. So we have NFT Backpack, we have Mad Labs, and we have Anchor Blank, so Anchor. I have really went deep dive into, okay, so who's Armani? How did that persona build his personal brand? How did he build his influence that then allowed him to become um, the founder of the hottest NFT project in the NFT space? And if we are to look right here, um, I have bookmarked some pretty interesting tweets. We can see that since June 6, 2021, Armani has been active within the Solana ecosystem as a builder. So that's June 6, 2021, even before Solana became the hot thing it is today. And if we are to continue scrolling, we can see that, so Mad Lads, in case you're wondering about organic development on Project Serum, Solana, that pretty much explains to us that Armani has been active within the ecosystem, within the builder ecosystem of Solana from the very early stages. Right here, Armani is sitting down with the engineer at Solana Foundation. I don't know who Armani is, which, which of the two he is, uh, but one of them is an engineer at Solana and Armani is having dinner with them, what it seems like. And then on May 20th, so the tweets we were seeing before were still in 2021. Now we're in 2022, May 20th, which is at the beginning of the Solana summer. And this is where we start seeing Mad Armani tease this community that he has building up, which is XNFT. And we can hear, we can see all of a sudden, here Armani has started building that community, XNFT. And we can recognize that one of the challenges that he made was having people change their name and add XNFT to it. So if we are to look, for example, so right here, he's made a challenge where people in the NFT space had to change their name to XNFT. And you can recognize some pretty notable names right here. So for example, uh, Iced NFT, uh, Iced Knife, and a couple other notable figures within the Solana ecosystem. So this is where I was wondering, like what exactly was XNFT? Because if I were to click right here and were to look for XNFT, this is what I got. This account doesn't exist. So what is it exactly that happened? And this led me down an investigation into Mad Lads' Discord. So right here, I am on Mad Lads' Discord. And as we speak, the server has about 20,000 members. But what's more interesting for me is that since May 19th, 2022, the server has been live. So the server for Mad Lads, which is an NFT project that only started marketing in February this year, has been live since last year. And this is what the first announcement said. Yes, you are early. And I kept scrolling, kept scrolling, kept scrolling. And at some point here in June 20th, so a couple months after that first announcement on Discord, we can see that Tristan made this one announcement, which has said, as part of this story, we will also be doing an NFT collection. Although that is far from now, it is a secret among us members on Discord. And I'm excited to share this journey with you. And you can see, so this has been an NFT project that's been in planning for over one year now. Now, exactly one month after announcing that there's gonna be an NFT collection, the team behind Mad Armani announces something. And this is the sneak peek of a backpack. So this right here is a sneak peek of a platform that they're building. And then down the line, they're going to be end up launching an NFT wallet called Backpack. So you can see here at some point, um, Mad Armani on Twitter starts talking about his new startup called Backpack, which is pretty much, you can check it out. I've uh, downloaded the extension myself. Backpack is nothing more than an NFT wallet. So it's a wallet not, not far from MetaMask, not far from Phantom Wallet, where you can pretty much send and receive Solana and Ethereum, store your NFT. And there's also a nice little uh, addition there, which is a chat. You can chat with other members of the Backpack community. So GM, 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 everyone. 
and all of a sudden, boom, you can see all of us have a username. So it's like they're, they're trying to gamify the whole wallet experience. They're trying to turn it into a social media. And what they did is they ended up building this software, this startup called Backpack. And if we are to keep scrolling up, we can see that Backpack very quickly became one of the hottest NFT startups on the Solana ecosystem. So right here, we can see this is from Wormhole. More great X-Hack news. Head of strategy at FTX US, Jack is coming to X-Hack. Tristan has a huge background in brand building and will give us some insight into how NFT Backpack became one of the best communities in the Web3 space. And guess what happens right after that? And this is me assuming that during that talk, during that conference, this is where Tristan announced that Backpack just received funding, $20 million of funding from the FTX Ventures we all know what happened to that, but still doesn't take away from the achievement that this team had. They received $20 million and very quickly this started making rounds around the NFT space um, where we had companies like Fortune, TechCrunch, Magic Eden, um, pretty much make rounds of news about this startup. On February 1st, this is where Tristan, the team behind Mad Lads, officially announced what the name of the project is actually going to be. So everyone, today is an important day for our history. Today is the day we reveal the true name of this collection. We are the Mad Lads and this is Mad Lads collection. Let's freaking go. So you get the idea, you get the sequence of events of what happened. We have Armani an NFT builder in the NFT space that has been active in the Solana ecosystem before Solana even was a thing, made collection, made connections with some of the biggest, smartest people within the NFT space, ends up becoming part of different communities, making friends, launches softwares, launches products and services like Backpack into the NFT space, gains popularity, gets $20 million of funding from FTX, and then slowly, slowly starts building his community over one year time frame. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the journey of Mad Lads. Mad Lads was not an NFT project that came out of nowhere in two months and all of a sudden made the news. I'm not even going to be going like I typically do into the reverse engineer hacking of Mad Lads, their Twitter, what they did, because the rest is irrelevant. Because what Mad Lads had at this stage was the hardest part that projects typically struggle with, which is building a community and having a founder worth respecting. Again, right now this fortifies my community and this is why I was so happy to see that case study about Mad Lads because it only fortified that strong philosophy that I had about the Web3 space. The only projects that will succeed in 2023 moving forward are the projects led by people, by thought leaders and by builders in the Web3 space. No longer can any project come out of nowhere with an undock team and just launch a random project without any having any a big reputable name behind the project. Nakamigos, they had the MFR community, they had Beeple. Mad Lads, they had uh, Armani and all the connections, the friends that he had behind him. All he needed to do was just put a tweet out and all of a sudden all his friends were going to support him because they believed in him and they knew that whatever Armani was building, they wanted to be part of because that is going to be big, that is going to succeed. That's why it's so important. That's why I'm, I was not even going to go into the actual tweets, funnel hacking of Mad Lads. They succeeded because of those exact reasons. Now, there's a little catalyst that allowed Mad Lads to succeed and that is the fact that D-Gods recently left Solana and went to Ethereum and Utes went to Polygon. And this, ladies and gentlemen, left a gap within the market, a gap for the number one NFT community. It left a lot of people with liquidity, maybe people that had sold their D-Gods before the migration, perhaps because they lost trust in D-Gods. So all of a sudden there was this gap in the market and Mad Lads had all the ingredients that allowed it to position itself and come in and fill that gap. And that's one of the things I would say kind of made Mad Lads lucky because at the end of the day, luck is only preparation meets opportunity. So preparation was, they've been building for a year, opportunity, D-Gods leaves the ecosystem and all of a sudden Mad Lads position themselves as the new blue chip, which is the beautifully played move, ladies and gentlemen. So you're probably wondering like, okay, Leon, how does that work for me? Like I myself, I'm not reputable in the NFT space. I don't have a name, I don't have connections. I'm just starting from zero and that's totally fine. The goal right now for you in the coming three months, in the coming six months, in the coming 12 months is going to be to building your personal brand and to building your connections, to building your circle, to building your name within the NFT space. So try to get out there, produce content, 
or if you're not a content producer yourself, build brands that will help you earn people's respects. You can either build brands or you can produce content. Those are the only two things you can do in the NFT space to help you build your credibility and to help you build your name. So pick your battle and spend the next three to 12 months just doing that. And that's exactly what I've been doing, ladies and gentlemen, with my YouTube channel, with the Twitter content I've been posting out there, with the content I've been putting on Instagram, TikTok, uh, LinkedIn, the content you don't see. I've been out there trying to build my community. And it's only then when you have a community of people around you because you actually do bring value into their life that you can actually start building an NFT project. If you find yourself in a place where you need help launching your NFT project, you might be a passionate builder but not necessarily a skilled marketer, um, we can totally help with that. All you need to do is just click on the link in the description of this video so we can set up a free 30 minute strategy call and see if this is a good fit, if we can help you and how you can get involved with us. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you very soon. Ciao.